Once upon a time, as many a strange tale begins, and mine is quite a strange one, I decided to take an evening stroll around the charming streets of Westminster. Granted, I may be losing your interest already, but please do not forsake me, oh my darling viewer, yet by switching off. This tale does get stranger as it goes on. Upon arrival in the genteel London district, I was so distracted by the delightful architecture there that I didn't notice the hissing sound nor the strange white smoke billowing around me until it was too late. The next thing I remember was waking up. I was nauseous, disorientated and had the most awful headache, as though someone had struck a hammer into the anvil they had mistaken my head for. I may have felt like an old girl who was death warmed up, but I was still alert enough to realise I was no longer in Westminster, for those clearly weren't the chimes of Big Ben ringing outside. I pulled myself out of bed and walked over to the window, although the shock that greeted me there nearly made me fall out of it. I didn't recognise any of these buildings, nor this village-like location. What's going on, I thought? Where is everybody? And where am I? I quickly turned the TV on for a clue, but all it would show was some schizoid man in what appeared to be an anger management training video on a loop. So I quickly got dressed and started to explore the grounds. My initial instinct was generally wary. Although there was no one about, I had the strangest feeling that I was being constantly watched. Yet there was so much warmth and charm about the place, I soon had a change of mind and felt remarkably relaxed. The place was calm, sedate and stress-free. If this was some sort of holiday resort, then I'm sure it would experience many happy returners to its doors every year. For why wouldn't someone want to come back and enjoy such tranquillity again and again? And who could resist returning to that stunning beach? But where was this beach? Portugal or Morocco, perhaps? Far too cold. Maybe the Baltics? Lithuania? No, far too mountainous. So it seemed pointless then to jump on this boat, cry tally-ho, and try to escape, not knowing where on earth I was, but also because the tide was out. Way, way out. How many miles? I just couldn't put a number on it. Isn't Tally Ho an aircraft call? Anyway, everything just felt very open here and free for all to wander around in, if there were others here to do so with me. I passed the morning walking around the well-kept gardens and then spent at least an hour trying to checkmate myself on this large chessboard here pawn to Queen's Four. After that, I decided to explore the delights of the surrounding forestry. It was easy enough for me to get from A to B and see everything it had to offer, including some more tantalising clues as to where I may actually be. Was I somewhere in the Orient? Japan, perhaps, if these stunning lakeside spots were anything to go by? Or maybe I was in Minnesota, America, if this was indeed the prince's grave. It turned out to be a dog's grave, one of many inside this well-kept and much-loved dog cemetery. Down, Rover! Sadly, for someone at least, this forest has seen more than the odd poor funeral. And sensing the magic and mystery of the place, I'm sure it has also occasionally witnessed the dance of the dead canine's grand perennial neighbour here as well. In all my travels to date, I have never felt so relaxed, nor felt the desire to delay returning home, if I knew how to from this place. I could see myself happily living in harmony here, with the eclectic collection of statues and busts dotted around the place to keep me company. And so, dear viewer, I'm considering resigning from my day job, selling up and moving here for good. After all, my life is my own, and I am a free woman, to do as I please. Now if I could just find out the address of this place so my things could be sent on here, that would be a good start. Be seeing you.